Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Docker, creating your own Docker image from scratch, and we're also gonna cover how to work with a local registry and how it is set up and configured. So let's just jump in here. And uh, so first off, I have a little guide here, and this is something that you can find down in the description below. So first off, we need to install some images, so uh, some packages. We need to install the Docker package with all the tools that we need. We need to install Docker IO, which is the engine and the server component. And we also install Docker registry. The Docker registry is something that you actually can install as a Docker image if you like because it's <laughs> it's something that can live within your Docker installation. I think it's a little bit harder to configure that way and to uh, run it that way, but if you want it to be scalable and moving around in your environment on your different nodes, then that could be an option for you. And if you are in that, that place, you need to supply the configuration file required for configure your, configuring your registry. But uh, if you install it on your Debian machine, you will have the configuration available in your distribution. So this should be done uh, soon here, just writing some documentation. And if we go into the etc docker registry, there is a config YAML file. And here you see how this is set up, which address or port it's uh, running on and, and so on. And in this HTTP block here, you can also add any keys that you want for your HTTPS connection, for instance. And you can also add Let's Encrypt support. So it actually connects to Let's Encrypt and creates a, a certificate, adds that to your installation. So you have a secure connection, which is very important for your registry. But as I'm running this on my local machine and I don't have any domain, I can't set that up at the moment. Follow any guide uh, uh, online. There is a, a lot of good documentation on the Docker web page. So let's get back to my little guide here. Next up, I want to create a Debian from scratch, an image that I control, that I know what it actually contains. I want to create it from my Debian resources. If you take something from Docker Hub, you need to verify that the person who built that installation is actually uh, someone that you can trust. But by building it from scratch or building it your own, you are the one that is to be trusted. So long as you can trust the installation that you ha have on disk and the packages that you install into your distribution. So what I did now, I installed something called dbootstrap. And this is something in um, Debian where you can take your system or create a very minimal system and install that into a directory. Uh, you can actually take your whole system, package that up and put into Docker if you like. You can create a subset in a directory, package that up and send into Docker and so on. So there is a lot of different ways you can create this. But the easiest way is just running this command, uh, the bootstrap buster buster, which means it will download the most essential packages for the buster distribution to your machine and put them in a directory called buster. So the second uh, argument here is the directory where it will put all the files. So when this is done and it validated all the packages, I will have a directory called Buster, which will contain this 
full system. So now it has downloaded, unpacked, configured this whole system. So if we go into the directory buster, you see here that you have a Linux distribution with all the files required for that distribution. And you can add more files to this uh, as well if you want that to be in your particular installation. Next thing that we do in this guide is actually putting it into Docker. So we will package it up, this directory called Buster, and then we will pipe that information into our Docker environment, saying that we want to import it and call it Buster. So this command will package this directory up import it into Docker and name it Buster. Now we have it in our local environment. If we run Docker images, image list, you see here that you have Buster. It's the latest, it was created nine seconds ago and it's 200 um, megs large. We can remove our Buster directory here. So now we have that installed. Next up, we can run this one and just see that we have the right release, uh, release on that system. And we see here that this is a Debian Buster version 10 code name Buster. Uh, next up, we will uh, tag this with the localhost 5000 my Debian. Uh, and that is what it will be called within our Docker registry. And then I will push it up to my Docker registry. And this will take the current image that I have installed in my environment and pushing it to this local environment again, but it will push it to the registry. So we will have this image available there. Uh, if we go over here, I have actually a link to this registry here. Uh, so here we see that on port 5000 version 2, uh, I call this my Debian. So if we look here, we have my Debian is the name of the this uh, le release. And then I can say tag lists. I got a not a good response from the start, but when it's done, I actually get my Debian is the name and the tag is latest. So I just have the tag laced, latest. So in this API, there is a lot of different commands. You can actually run getters and uh, gets and post and so on to the registry by hand if you want to add something. But uh, Usually you use the docker commands in order to push things into the registry, but it can be good to know that it's just a, a JSON a REST API that you can actually work with if you like. Next up, I will run a prune on my system and this will remove all containers, all images, so I will have a clean install. And it also asks me, are you sure that you want to remove everything? This is not something that you will run in a production environment where you have a lot of installation and a lot of running things. So this is just in this example where I want to test things out because I, will, I want to go to a clean installation and try to use this image that we now created and pushed to our registry. Next up, I will create a very minimal Docker file here. So we will vi docker file, and I will put in this little uh, script here from localhost uh, colon uh, 5000 slash my Debian. So that is the current that that uh, Debian distribution that we created and then I will run an upgrade in that system so I have the latest API updates and then I will install PHP just so we see that we can install one package and see uh, that that is up and running. I will run uh, a docker build and call that PHP install just tag it by that. We download it. We will extract this uh, image that we uploaded. 
And after that, it will run apt update. And we get some interesting warning here that apt does not have a stable CLI interface, uh, which cause uh, is used with caution this script. And then I run the installation of PHP. We see that it runs the installation. It should be done quite fastly because that's not a huge package or there is not that many different packages that is required to install PHP. So now I have a Docker image, which is called PHP install. So we run Docker image list. We see here that we have PHP install, which was created 15 seconds ago. So let's go over to the script here and we just run this uh, PHP install and look at the version of PHP and it returns that we are running 7.3.11 in this Docker image. This is what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. Have you created any specific Docker image from scratch? What did it contain? Add a comment down below. Uh, if you have any other suggestions or comments, leave those down there as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.